question tells you aluminum hydroxide has a KSP of blah, blah, blah. If I don't give you the KSP and I just say we're talking about a solution of aluminum hydroxide, you'd be able to use your chart to find the KSP value. Um, for this one, I just made it so you don't even need to have your chart with you. Um, starting off, ignoring the questions, do the things you can always do. Dissociated ice chart KSP. So dissociating aluminum hydroxide, which is our solid, it's going to dissociate into aluminum ions and hydroxide ions, then I balance it. I don't need to fill out my solid column. These start as zeros because there are no initial values given. Plus S is S, plus 3S is 3S. My KSP is products over reactants. Coefficients become exponents, and I'm leaving the solid out of it. Um, so I can plug these values into my KSP. 3 cubed is not 9, it is 27. S cubed times another S is S to the 4. My KSP value that was given, either in the question or on your chart, can get plugged in there. Then, in order to find um, S, I'm going to make sure I type this number in. I use the big E button on my calculator. Divide it by 27 first. When you divide by 27, you should get 4.7 times 10 to the negative 35. To clear out that fourth, I'm going to raise it to the 1 divided by 4 power, having 1 divided by 4 in parentheses. And I get an S of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 9. That's the work, most of the work for A, B, and C. So my answer to C, molar solubility, is just S, is the 2.6 times 10 to the negative 9th number. Um, um, the concentration of aluminum ions, the concentration of hydroxide ions, well, it says aluminum should just be S, so it's also the same thing. Hydroxide, it says, should be 3 times S. So I'm going to take this value I have and multiply it by 3. So that was taking this times 3. Um, not necessarily the aluminum value. It just so happened it was the same as the molar solubility. So taking my S times 3. Then it asks how many grams of aluminum hydroxide can dissolve in 20 liters of water. Well, we know that this is my solubility in moles per liter. I have to get it to grams instead of moles, and I have to get it to 20 liters instead of, this is implied, 1 liter. The order you do that in doesn't matter. It's going to be mathematically the same steps, whatever order you want. Um, most of you probably start by knowing that to go from moles to grams, we just multiply by, mo by molecular weight. So to go from moles per liter to grams per liter, we still just multiply by molecular weight. The molecular weight will be of aluminum hydroxide. So that molecular weight is 78. If I do 2.6 times 10 to the negative 9 times 78, that changed the moles to grams, but I still have my per liter. And I get 2.03. times 10 to the negative 7th grams per 1 liter. But I haven't taken my 20 liters into account. So 2.03 times 10 to the negative 7th grams is for 1 liter. I want to find the grams for 20 liters. Multiply and I get 4.06 times 10 to the negative 6th grams. So ultimately, for part D, I had to multiply by molecular weight and multiply by 20. doesn't matter what order you did that in. That's it.